three, four, right, touch right, left, touch left, and grapevine. Now you take it, right? Left, that's it. All right, looking good. Back. One, two, three, and four. Hey, <laughs> shake the head now. <laughs> oh, hey, hold it, hold it. For heaven's sake, Gavin, what's the matter? Yeah, what's the matter? Was it that bad? How long have you been here? Well, I don't know, about ten minutes maybe. You weren't here when I got here. So you thought that you would just start a little pas de deux with Officer Nijinsky here? Hey, take it easy. We was just messing around, that's all. How many times have I told you never to start prancing around this studio until you've done your warm-up exercises? This is elementary, Jody. This is kindergarten. Calvin, take it easy. Look, it's my fault, okay? I'm the one who was showing her the stuff. Look, Calvin, don't you take the blame. You didn't do anything wrong, and neither did I. I'll tell you when you do something wrong, just as I tell you when you do something right, which isn't too often. You never tell me I do anything right. In fact, you haven't said one good word about me since I set foot in your studio. I'll say a good word about you when you do something Something worth praising. If you think I'm such a rotten dancer, why do you bother with okay, me? Okay, look, will you two just cut this out? I mean, you sound like two bad cats on an alley fence. Well, it's true, isn't it? You don't think I'm much of a dancer. All you know how to do is criticize me and tell me how bad I am and how lazy I am and how I never listen to you. Well, you just gave me the perfect example, didn't you? Listen. It's all up to you, kid. It always has been. If you if you know the conditions I set down here. If you don't like them, don't dance. What? Riley, will you calm down? Look, Jody's just a kid. She's just starting out. You got plenty of time to get better. Calvin, it's okay. Calvin's right. I have to listen to him. He did set up the conditions, and I have to follow them. It's all in the contract. Go to the bar and start your exercises. Calvin, why don't you run through that soft shoe routine for me again? No, I'm through for the day. I've got to work before the midnight, so I'm going to have to give up being Officer Nijinsky and just go back to being plain old Detective Stoner, I guess. I meant that as a compliment, you know. <laughs> sure, what? Well, I'll uh, see you guys later. I haven't had anything to eat all day. Okay, half pint. You want to tell me what all this noise is about a contract? Well, you know what a contract is, don't you? <laughs> well, actually, in my line of work, a uh, contract could be any number of a couple of things. I assume you mean the old-fashioned sign on the dotted line, kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's all written and very formal. Although some people have told me if you took me to court, it wouldn't be binding. <laughs> you mean Gavin? What's he going to do, be your uh, business manager or something? Yeah, well, he's more than that. He's supposed to be teaching me how to dance, but right now he's telling me how to run my life. I have no one to blame but myself. I, I agree to all of this. Jody, you're not even old enough to sign a legal document. Why don't you just tear it up and forget it if that's what you want? No, I couldn't do that. Don't you see, Calvin, it's more than the paper I've signed. Gavin's agreeing to give me free dance lessons and letting me use the studio for nothing. He's really not getting anything out of this. Oh? No. I really don't think he's sadistic or anything like that. He believes everything he's telling you about dancing. He just takes it too seriously. But don't worry, you'll be sorry every time he yells at me, because when I'm the big star on Broadway, he won't be able to get a ticket to my performance. <laughs> Good for you. I bet that'll be soon, too. Well, maybe I'll have pity on him and let him stand in the back of the theater with his old coat and his long gray hair. Well, why gray hair? Because that's how long it's going to take you. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that. Look, I got to go. Um, if he gets too tough with you, you call a cop. Me, okay? Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Listen, I'm sorry about coming down so hard on you before. It's just that I've seen what can happen to dancers who start out cold. You can hurt your back, pull a muscle, and worse. 
I didn't say you were wrong, Gavin. Yeah, but you probably think I'm wrong in the way I say and do things. And I guess you're right. I'm a dancer, not a diplomat. Correction. I meant dance teacher. Don't you think of yourself as a dancer anymore? Let's start out with something slow. Something tells me I know exactly what you want to talk to me about. Well, I'm glad you're a mind reader. We can certainly use one in this department. You want to talk about the Nadine Scott case, right? Yes, I want to talk about the Nadine Scott case. That's just what I wanted to tell you. Stop using that damned word when describing it. Okay, well, it was an accident case, wasn't it? I think we need a bit more precise vocabulary around here. Now, when I use the word case, it's because there's a crime involved. Do I have to remind you that the medical examiner has already determined that this was an accident? I know that, Chief. And when somebody dies in an accident, it is highly unprofessional for a police officer to use tactics better suited for a criminal matter, such as this, for instance. I can't see what you've got there. It's a requisition for a toll call, an overseas toll call. Oh, that. You called Nadine Scott's lawyer in London, didn't you? Well, they Mr. call them Peabody. solicitors, you know that? I call it outrageous. Our only obligation was to notify the next of kin. We did that. Well, look, Chief, if it bothers you that much, I mean, I will pay for the charges out of my own pocket. Charges, huh? That's the right word, all right. You've been trying to make charges out of this case. I can't use that word, case. You called Nadine Scott's lawyer to find out the terms of her will. Yeah, and he wouldn't tell me a thing. Can you believe it? Boy, I mean, you, you've heard about discreet lawyers. Well, I'm telling you, solicitors are a lot worse. Well, Chief, what is wrong with trying to find out who benefits from that poor woman's death? Her accidental death. Well, I just wonder if the medical examiner would have called it accidental if we had had an autopsy. Raven had All right, Detective, her that's enough body. on this. This subject is closed. Chief, do you know that Raven came to see me? How would I know that? Well, you do see her on occasion, don't you? I said this matter was over. Don't you want to know what she said to me? She told me what her sol mother's solicitor wouldn't. She said she doesn't stand to inherit one dime of her mother's money. Now there, isn't that even more reason to stop fiddling around with this matter? All right, let me ask you just one question. Did she come to see you about this matter? tell you something, Deborah. If you're implying that I have any personal bias in this matter, you... Excuse me. I, uh, I was told I could find Deborah here. Deborah Saxon was just leaving. What did he do? Chew you out about the phone call to London? You know, there was only one thing wrong with that phone call. I didn't learn anything. There's got to be somebody else I can talk to. I don't believe you. Look, don't you think you ought to give this up? Don't you see how sore Mallory is getting? There is somebody that I know who knew Nadine Scott very well. And her daughter. My own stepmother, Geraldine Saxon. It's a wonderful idea, Nancy. And you don't have to perform to deliver the news. You just have to know what you're doing. And nobody in Monticello knows news the way you do. Well, at, at the typewriter, maybe. But... Oh, I seem to recall you being very effective in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Remember, you were you were interviewed on that movers and movers shakers. and shakers. Oh, program. well, the, you, that was all right. That was uh, just answering questions. But my goodness, this is this is different. I mean. Well, to be uh, taking the place of the darling of the Monticello news. <sighs> Flattery will get you nowhere, and the darling of Monticello News is going to be sitting in front of her television set for the next two days waiting for these ghouls to take more blood. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't call doctors ghouls. I'm not in front of them. <sighs> sorry, sorry. Seriously, though, Nancy, I think you'll do just fine. I, I know you'll make this nervous wife of mine very happy if you agree to take over, just for a few days. But, um, well, have you tried to find other professionals? That... Yes, of course we have, and we haven't had any luck at it either. But... Professionals, I don't know, what if we found somebody really terrific? I might lose my job. Oh, well, I doubt that. But then again, you might be too good. 
I should really think this over. <laughs> you know, Mike thinks it's a wonderful idea. Just talk to him. Oh, he about does, it. does he? Well, my goodness, this is really putting the pressure on. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Anything for this, uh, this wife of mine. It really would make you happy if I do this. Yes, it would make me happy, but not just me. The management of WMON. They would consider it an honor to have Monticello News' finest reporter at their station. Oh, my goodness. Well, in the words of a famous reporter, flattery will get you nowhere. I'm sorry. I can't... Okay, I'll talk to Geraldine about it. Look, I just hope I'm not going to make a fool of myself here. Thank heavens. I am so glad. Oh, so oh, am I. I Nicole has been a handful the past couple of days. I practically yeah. had to tie her up to get her to come in here. Well, just because of a little dizzy spell. Has Dr. Stewart seen you yet? Yeah, he was in here just before you arrived, and he didn't look the least bit worried. Sure. Of course, it's not his blood they're going to be taking. Well, really, I don't think you have that much to worry about. You've already had some blood tests taken, haven't you? Yes, in his office. I don't see why I have to be in a hospital, but, you know, my husband... Well, he just wanted to do it under controlled circumstances over a period of time with a controlled diet, so it's not going to be that long. Hey, didn't you say you had some patients you had to see this oh, yeah. afternoon? A couple. Yeah. Something about seeing Emily Michaels? Oh, that's right. She's in here, too, isn't she? Well, she's in the halfway pavilion. Is she very ill, Miles? I'm afraid so. It's a serious breakdown. Ah. What can they do for her? Well, I know they're considering a number of alternatives. Shock therapy is one of them. She's so pathetic. I think it's obvious that she's just retreating from a very painful situation. Oh, yes, I realize that. You have to go. You're right. You're right. See you later this evening. It's one nice thing about being a doctor is we don't have to pay any attention to visiting hours. Mm -hmm. Hey. Take care of yourself. And don't worry about me. Please. Do you know something? I don't think Miles is going to take your advice about not worrying. I'll tell you the truth. I'm worried enough for both of us. I don't think you have any real reason to worry. I mean, after all, you know what's wrong. Not really. There are over a hundred different types of anemia, and sometimes they have a very hard time figuring out what some of those causes are. Well, I mean, is that important as long as they know the cure? Sometimes there's nothing they can do. Did Miles tell you that? <gasps> Absolutely not. Neither did Dr. Stewart, for that matter. I just have the feeling that unless they know exactly what causes your blood to go bad there... Isn't very much they can do about it. Oh, so that's your feeling, is it? Well, young lady, do you realize that you're wrong in making a judgment like that, even if you are the wife of a doctor? Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm just depressed. I was going to be in a television studio tonight, and here I am in a hospital. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Margaret. You leave the diagnosing up to the doctors and the treatment as well. You're going to be fine. I know it. I insist. What if this condition is chronic? Oh, Nicole, please. <laughs> I want to see some optimism here. Look, take me, for example. Take you? Yes. I'm going to be sitting in front of a television camera delivering the news. <sighs> oh. Tired. No, I'm not. I just I have to get my second win, that's all. Look, I don't want <clears> you <throat> killing yourself in here. You'll just blame me if you fall dead in the studio. How am I going to do that if I'm dead? You'll find a way. Right. Listen, did you have any lunch today? No, I didn't. And I bet you didn't have any breakfast either. Huh? Well, you just tell me not to eat too much before I take a dance class. I didn't tell you to starve yourself. You need nourishment, Jody. Didn't your mother ever tell you that? Never. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. You didn't have a mother like that. Well, listen, why don't you go get something to eat right now? Well, come to think of it, that hamburger you had before smelled pretty good. Well, I wish you'd told me. I would have gotten you one. Well, that's okay. I'll just run across the street and get one. Uh, don't get any of those french fries. They're too greasy. I won't. Gavin? Yeah? I'm sorry for what I said before about the contract. I didn't mean to seem ungrateful. I know it's not too important to you, Jody. It's not? 
not so. Yes, it is. You think that there's no, it has no validity to it. There's just something to keep me happy. Maybe you're right. If you wanted to break it, I'm sure you could. But I don't want to break it. Gavin, I wouldn't have signed it if I didn't feel it meant something. But if things get too rough around here? I intend to honor contract. When I signed that, it, it wasn't just ink on paper. It was something more. Like I signed something in my heart. I better go. <laughs> you went to lunch. I thought maybe you might want me to bring you something. I told you I had lunch. Gavin, can I try dancing to that song when I come back? No. Well, why not? Because I choose the music, remember? Well, what difference does the music make? It makes a difference to me. You know, Gavin, sometimes you're impossible. Why can't you just give an inch? Martini, why can't you ever take no for an answer? Go get your hamburger. dropping in to see you. I know you can't respond to me now or, or don't choose to. It's all right. Just wanted to make sure you knew that uh, we're all very sorry that you're, that you're ill. You're not the only uh, person that's ill, by the way. My wife is sick. We just brought her to the hospital. So there's somebody you know close by. there was something I could do for you. I just hope you're aware that I'm... that I'm here and that uh, all of us are pulling for you. The human mind is such a complicated thing, isn't it? Much more complicated than any of us thinks. Even us doctors. I guess that's why people are so complicated. Maybe it's a human heart that's so complex. Well, anyway, I just I just wanted to look in, say hello. But we are thinking of you, Emily. We wish you only the best. Oh, excuse me. Uh, no, that's all right. I was uh, just going to fix the window. The nurse said something about it being stuck. It's okay. I was about to leave anyway. 
Goodbye, Emily. Outside the edge of night. 